vamos a hablar de la posesión. Um, vamos a hablar de adjetivos de posesión y también cómo usamos de para indicar posesión, ¿sí? So today we're talking about possession. We're going to start with possessive adjectives. Okay, so the possessive adjectives, some of them you might recognize, you might know. Um, these are what we use to show belonging, right? So if I'm talking about something that belongs to me, I'm going to say me. I know, it's so crazy. So me doesn't mean me, it means my. Okay, me. Como mi familia, mi casa, mis zapatos, mi amor, mi vida. Okay, if I'm talking about something that belongs to you, I'm going to say to. Okay, to. Como tu um, mochila, tu teléfono. Now, you might think, well, what's the difference then between you and your? Because there is actually a difference. Okay, the difference between you and your is two for your, um, looks like it does here, but two for you has this tilde. This tilde right here is the difference between you and your, okay? Um, if it is belonging to um, him or her or you formal or you plural, that's all the same. It is all Sue. All right. So Sue has a whole bunch of these, right? Your, if I am talking um, politely, or his or her or their or y'alls, right? If I'm talking about you plural, this is, it's all Sue, okay? Sue, she's a special person. She has so much, all right? So Sue covers all of these. And then my last one we're going to talk about today is nuestro. Oh, I don't know why you're not showing up. Nuestro, which can also be nuestra. So nuestro or nuestra is how we say our, Okay, like nuestra familia, nuestra casa, nuestros recuerdos, okay? So these are our possessive adjectives, okay? La posesión en adjetivos. Now, this is important. It's important to note that these are adjetivos. These are adjectives. And the reason that that is important to note is because in Spanish... Um, we have what I like to call the as 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 rule, meaning that if what if my noun ends in an a or an s, my adjectives also need to end in that a or s, right? So if I, for example, let's get rid of all this extra stuff here. I'm sure you have it copied down by now. If, for example, I am talking about something that is plural, okay? So if I'm talking about my shoes, for example, zapatos. Because zapatos is plural, mis needs to become plural, right? So that it becomes mis zapatos. Or if I am talking about um, your ideas, okay? Ideas is plural, so therefore tu needs to be plural. Tus ideas. If I am talking about their families, okay? Familias is plural, so sus becomes plural. Now, this is very important. This sus would become plural if even if I'm saying her families. She has multiple families for some reason. Um, or um, y'all's families, okay? It doesn't matter if the possessor is plural it matters if what is possessed is plural, okay? And then let's look down here at nuestro or nuestra. Now, if I was saying, um, I'll come over here. If I was using, I'll use our things from above. If I'm saying zapatos, okay, it ends in an OS. Therefore, my possessive adjective is going to be nuestros. It's going to match, all right? If, however, I'm talking about ideas, then I need to end in an AS, nuestras, nuestras ideas, okay? So, possessive adjectives, 
are just right here. You need to think about, is it um, feminine? Does it end in an ah? If I'm talking about nosotros, at least, does it end in an ah? Or is it plural? Okay, is what is possessed plural? Not the possessor, but what is possessed, okay? So familias or ideas or zapatos, right? Not what's over here, okay? Now, this one is always the tricky one because people think sus means theirs because there's multiple of them, um, whereas su would be his or hers. But that's not the case. Su can mean all of those. It depends on what comes afterwards, all right? So this is possession with our adjectives, all right? So what if I don't have an adjective? What if I want to talk about somebody's something, right? So in English, we would use an apostrophe S, right? We would use this beautiful apostrophe S. Well, desafortunadamente, unfortunately, este, ese, no existe. This does not exist in Spanish. We are instead going to use de, okay? There is no apostrophe S in Spanish. Just say that to yourself 10 times. No hay apostrofe S en el español. No hay apostrofe S en el español. You get the gist. Say it a few more times to yourself. So what do I do then if I want to show possession? Okay, so... For example, if I want to say, my son, mi hijo, John, my son, John's backpack. I want to talk about John's backpack, okay? It's cute. It has Batman on it. So I'm talking about John's backpack. I have this apostrophe S here in English that does not exist in Spanish. So what I have some kids mistakenly do is they're just like, oh, well, there's no apostrophe S, so I'll take out the apostrophe. And it becomes John's mochila. Okay, this, it, it doesn't, this, this really, it does not work. It does not work. It just does not work in Spanish. So get that one out of your head. Okay, it does not work. It makes no sense whatsoever. So what do we do then? Okay, and I told you we're going to replace this with day. Okay, however, day means what in Spanish? Day significa of or from. Okay, so I can't say John of backpack. I need to flip it around. And now I'm going to say la mochila, the backpack, la mochila, day, John, the backpack of John, la mochila de John tiene Batman, see, la mochila de John, so it does include a little, there's a little bit of flip-flopping around here, and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but we cannot there is no apostrophe S. We have to say the something of the someone. Okay, so let's try it again. All right, if I'm going to talk about one son, I guess I should probably talk about the other one. Okay, so we're going to talk about Emmett's lunch. <laughs> okay, Emmett's lunch. So once again, this apostrophe S doesn't exist. We're changing it into day. Okay, so first we write down what is possessed. I hope his lunch isn't possessed. That would be sad. So we're going to go with el almuerzo. El almuerzo de Emmett. Okay, el almuerzo de Emmett es delicioso. Emmett's lunch is delicious. El almuerzo de Emmett es delicioso. De verdad, es delicioso. Tiene yogur y galletas y jamón y queso y salsa de manzana. Delicioso. Okay, we often use possession this way when we're talking about family members. Okay, for example, el esposo de mi hermana. El esposo de mi hermana. Okay, so let's figure this one out. El esposo de mi hermana. Okay, there's my possession that day. 
Now, I can't just replace this with apostrophe S because el esposo is husband, right? El esposo, the husband. And then mi hermana is sister, right? So I'm not saying the husband's my sister. That would be weird. I am saying the husband of my sister. Or in English, we would say my sister's husband, right? It's going to be back. I mean, not. it's not backwards. It's just switched. It's flip-flopped. Let's say it that way. It's flip-flopped. So you have to give it a little bit of thought. But as you practice with this and practice, practica, 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 it's just going to become easier and it just becomes more natural. But the only way for it to become natural is for you to practice. So practice through reading, um, practice sometimes. Sometimes when I was first starting speaking Spanish, it helped me to just practice saying it out loud in English, right? So instead of using this apostrophe as possession, I would say of, even in English. So I would say, the husband of my sister is very tall, right? And then it just started to sound right to me. El esposo de mi hermana es muy alto. Okay? So, please, dime si tienen preguntas. Let me know if you have any questions. Y hablamos después. Hasta luego.